Lord is good. Glory be to God. What a honor and privilege to be here again this morning or this afternoon. And I want to thank the Lord for what the Lord is doing. And I bless the Lord for his name. Amen. Uh, like I said in the first service, uh, this church in Swansea has become my second home. Or well, let me say my first home in Swansea. Praise God. Yeah, because this is the only place I've been ministering in Wales. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for bringing me to Wales for the first time, and the second time, and the third time. I pray God continue to bless you and bless your ministry in the name of Jesus. I want to appreciate all the other pastors and leaders and ministers and workers in the church. God bless you. Your labor in the kingdom shall not be in vain. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. King of glory, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, because we know that when your word comes, there is transformation. There is healing and there is restoration. Lord, we pray today that you will send your word to us. We pray today, O oh God, that no life will remain the same. Open our eyes of understanding and do eternal works in our lives. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. So by the grace of God, we'll be continuing where we stopped. Like I told you on Friday, that I'll just keep teaching in each session until we get to the second service. Amen. So we've been talking about the emergence of world changers. Now, uh, I know some of us were not around in the first service, but I'm going to use the next five minutes to lay some foundation and we'll pick it up from there. We established from the word of God right from Friday that there is so much value that heaven places upon your life. We established from the word of God that as far as God is concerned, men, and when I mean men, I mean men and women, are answers to the problems of this, our world. That is, Whenever there are problems, whenever there are issues to be resolved upon this earth, God will not come from heaven or send an angel. God will have to raise somebody and that individual becomes the savior, becomes the person that resolves the problem that might be there. Therefore, men are answers to prayers. Men are solutions. So whenever there is a difficulty and we need a solution, man is the solution that God will raise. We established that even when it came to the business of salvation of soul, when God couldn't find a man, God had to become man. Why? Because it was man that must be saved. And because man must be saved, God had to become man because only men are permitted to become solutions upon the earth. And Jesus Christ, when he lived and died and went resurrected and went to heaven, we establish in Isaiah 53 verse 10 that he raised up sons. His life is prolonged through those of us that will come to him. So the assignment he came to do, he did not have to live on earth physically forever. Why? Because you and I will continue with the work of being a savior that Jesus Christ came to do. That's why Obadiah verse 21 says, and saviors shall rise from the mount of Zion and they will judge the mount of Esau and the kingdom shall be the laws. Praise the name of the Lord. Now we concluded in the first service by looking at the character of these saviors that God is raising. 
by looking at the character of these world changers and let me say this to you that when we are talking of god raising men we established all through since friday that god is not just talking about your life being you know uh, getting married having children or getting a job that is we are saying from the pages of scriptures that you as an individual you are a solution to an issue to a problem there is a sphere of human endeavor that heaven has ordained that you will be the savior there and we give examples in scriptures we looked at people you know like bezalel who were raised by god with the spirit of wisdom and innovation when it comes to construction are you still here with me we looked at other people in scriptures like joseph we looked at daniel these were people raised up by god and they became solutions in their generations so your life is what much more than what you think it is your life is precious you are a solution you are a savior and we established also in the first service that as far as heaven is concerned you must not define yourself by your past failures past troubles past mistakes because we saw that all those things are working together to propel you into your heavenly assignment that there is a prophetic mandate over your life we saw the case of jeroboam the son of the jeroboam the, the, the second and we saw that jeroboam the second that there were prophetic words spoken by jonah that he was the one that had to fulfill those words god raised him up hallelujah so the purpose of this conference is that individuals we have their eyes open to see what heaven is expecting of them to see into the possibilities the realms that god wants you to enter into that is your life is not just local you carry something international you carry something that should affect a generation you are supposed to provide solutions in the governance in banking in business in technology engineering medicine in whatever field of human endeavor you carry a mandate to bring solution glory be to god well so we stopped at looking at the people that god is raising what are the qualities of this man we said number one they are the people that are moved by the things that move god glory be to god why because god we always want to look for a way for you to come close to him because the assignment over your life requires power and i gave the example of moses going to egypt that was his assignment now moses grew up in egypt he had the best education in egypt and he knew that pharaoh was not a joke so when god told him come now therefore i will send you to pharaoh in exodus chapter 3 verses 10 to 12 he said to god he said who am i that i should confront pharaoh who am i that i should go to pharaoh and then god replied in verse 12 and said certainly i will be with you so when it comes to these kinds of assignment you need the backing of god you need the power of god for you to carry this out and this power does not come by just being a nominal christian so god will keep orchestrating events to draw you closer to him are you still here with me 
So when you had that disappointment, when you had that challenge, you know what happened? God wanted you to convert that as an opportunity to draw close. When that person disappointed you, when that thing you were expecting didn't come true, when it seems as if you are going to be put to shame, instead of crying, those are events that you are supposed to turn around and draw close to God instead of giving up, instead of saying, God, why? Those things are to draw you near unto God. And we establish from Hosea chapter 2 verse 14 that it is when you draw near to God that is when God gives you your vineyard. So the vineyard that you have been praying to God about, the things that you have been crying to God about, they are delivered to you. Where? They are delivered when you draw close unto God. So number one, for those that will fulfill the mandate of war changers to turn around their generation, there are people that are moved by the things of God. Number two, after they are moved by the things of God, they respond. They respond to God. Hallelujah. I want you to say with me this afternoon, Say, I will respond to God. Hmm. There are people that have been postponing their response. And a conference like this is designed to make you respond. Don't just say, well, tomorrow, okay, next week, or next month, or next year, I will begin. No, you have to respond unto God right now. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Now we read in Exodus chapter 3 in verse 4 that when Moses saw the fire that was burning and the bush that was burning and the bush was not consumed. Look at what happened. The Bible said, so when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said Moses Moses and he said here am I when God saw that he responded when God saw that he responded will you respond today listen to me all those disappointments you face they are to make you respond to the call of God glory be to God they are to make you draw near and go into the closet and say, God, here am I. Now, when you respond to God, how do we know you have responded? The way we know that you have responded is that there is a submission of your will to the will of God. There is a submission of your will to the will of God. In the book of Hebrews chapter 10 from verse 5, I want us to read together. Hebrews chapter 10 from verse 5 to 10. Can we read together quickly? Are you, are you still here with me? If you are still here, shout hallelujah. Say with me, say, oh Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Now he said, therefore, when he came into the world, he said, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you are prepared for me. Verse 6. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure. Then I said, behold, I come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me to do your will. Oh God, let's stop there. To do your will. The hallmark of a man or woman who have responded to God is that you will see in their lives that they are ready to carry out God's will and not their will. Glory be to God. Now when you are coming in here into this nation, you had your aspirations. But when a person is ready and say, Lord, your will, 
not my will yes i have my aspirations yes i have my will i have my desire but lord i am putting you first it is what you want me to do first that is what i am committed to when jesus was at the garden of gethsemane in luke chapter 22 in verse 42 he says but say father if thou be willing remove this cup from me nevertheless not my will but your will be done not my will but your will be done glory be to god glory be to god I remember entering the university. I had my plans. But by my second year in the university, I responded to God. And God began to lead my life in a direction that I was not even planning for. Glory be to God. Now, you have your plans. But when you say, Lord, here am I. Now, when you meet people, who have submitted themselves to the will of God. When they come to church, sir, they don't gossip. Oh. When they come to church, they look for something to do. When they come to church, they look for how to advance the kingdom. Glory be to God. And I need to let you know this. All of us are not perfect. So it is impossible to gather 300 imperfect people and expect them to behave perfectly. It's not possible. So that's why you can never get a perfect church. And I always say this. If you go to a church where everything looks perfect. It's a cult. Run away. Are you still here with me? It's a cult. It's not a church. Are you still here? So when you see a person. Who have laid down his will. For the will of God, at every point in time, his desire is how to advance the cause of the kingdom. How can I contribute to the advancement of the kingdom of God? How can I contribute? Lord, what will you have me do? You know, when God encountered Paul on the way to Damascus, do you know his response? When that light shone upon him and he became blind, he said, Lord, what do you want me to do? That was his response. So, what does the Lord want you to do in Swansea? What does the Lord want you to do in United Kingdom? Glory be to God. In John chapter 10, verse 17, Look at what Jesus said. John chapter 10 verse 17. Let's read together quickly. John chapter 10 verse 17. Say with me again. Say not my will, O God, but your will. Now look at what he said. He said, therefore, my father loves me. Now, what makes the father to love him? Is it because he's the son of God? No. He said, because i lay down my life that i might take it again in other words i am paying a price i am putting my will aside for the will of the father he said therefore does my father love me glory be to god now when you put your will down for the will of the master and you say, Lord, I'm responding to your will. There is a dimension of the supernatural that is unleashed upon your life. There is a dimension of results that you see in your life. Glory be to God. God's power does not come on people who have not submitted to his will. Lord, what will you have me to do? What will you have me to do? And you cannot know all this. You can't get this if you don't draw close to him. Glory be to God. What will you have me do? Remember we are talking of world changers in the order of God. People that will carry the power of God to change the world. 
power does not come on people who still cherish their will above the will of God. Power doesn't come upon them. Power doesn't come upon them. Glory be to God. Now let's move quickly. Number three, we have said number one, they are moved by the things that move God. Number two, they respond to God by laying down their wheels for the will of God. And number three, their response to God connects them with the power of God for the assignment. When they respond to God, there is a release of power over their lives. In other words, when you see the saviors, they are not just operating by the wisdom of man. There is a release of power that takes them to a dimension that you know that things that they are producing, words that they are speaking, exploits that they are making, they are not ordinary. They are vision man. What is coming out of them is as a result of a divine backing. You see divine backing in their lives. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 19, chapter 1, verse 23. Proverbs chapter 19, I mean chapter 1, verse 23. Let's read together. Proverbs 1, 23. I want us to move quick because I want us to pray. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed at all today? Proverbs 1, 23. Say with me, say my father, as I yield to your will, let your power be released upon my life. Now look at what he says. He said, turn at my rebuke. Surely I will pour out my spirit on you. I will make my words known unto you. When there is a turn, a turning, when there is a response, when there is a response, when there is a submission to the will of God, you begin to walk in a dimension of power. Now, when I mean power, I don't mean just power where you pray and people fall under anointing. That's a dimension of power. But there is a dimension of power for every assignment. Are you still here? We saw Bezalel, his own dimension was in creativity. We saw Uzziah, his own dimension was in engineering and technology. We saw Daniel, his own dimension was in governance. We saw Joseph, his own dimension was in governance. We saw David, his own dimension was in establishing an, entire, a brand, an entirely brand new kingdom. Glory be to God. We have operated... In the flesh enough. It's time for a switch. Mm, it's time for a switch. We want to begin to see results. That come from the spirit. We want to begin to see results. That come as a result of a divine backing. That people will look at you and they will say, look, the, the, the result you are having, this is beyond ordinary. The speed at which certain things are happening in your life. Unbelievers will come to you and say, come, we don't see people emigrating here and having this result you are having in five years. What are you using? When we look at your life, it shouldn't just be what the natural can achieve or accomplish. We should see elements of divinity backing you up in every area of life. We are they say there is no way. We see the divine hand of God making a way for you. Glory be to God. 
Job 32, verses 18 to 20. Job 32, verses 18 to 20, have this to say. Marabashta. He said, for I am full of words. The spirit within me compels me. Verse 19, indeed my belly is like wine that has no vein. It is ready to burst like new wine skins. Verse 20. I will speak that I may find relief. I must open my lips and answer. We see here, it said, there is the spirit that is within me compels me. I love the way one translation puts it. There is a spirit of, in man. And the inspiration of God gives them understanding. You are producing results that are backed by the spirit backed by the spirit what will take the natural man 10 years you are having the result in two years glory be to god what will take your contemporary five years to achieve in one year you are testifying while others are saying well let's just try and get a job and get by in five years you are ceo are, are you still here with me that we know this is a matter being produced by the spirit i am praying today that as you respond to God, there will be a release of divine backing upon your life uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. A massive release of God's spirit. Let's go into Judges chapter 2. These world changers, we are saying as they respond to God, then there is a release of the Spirit of God upon them. Judges chapter 2 from verse 16. Judges chapter 2 from verse 16. Judges. Now look at it. We said whenever there is crisis, what does God do? He will raise up saviors. Now it says from verse 16 to 18. Judges 2. Now it said never the Lord less the Lord raised up judges who deliver them out of the hand of those who plunder them. Amen. Amen. I believe somebody is getting a revelation right from this. Now verse 17. Let's go on. He said, yet they will not listen to the, their judges, but they play the lot with other gods and bow down to them they turn quickly from the way in which their fathers walked. In obeying the commandments of the Lord, they did not do so. Verse 18. Let's read verse 18 together. One, two, go. And when the Lord raised up judges for them, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, and deliver them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the church. So we see a divine backing. I want you to say with me, say from today, my life will show an evidence of divine backing in the name of Jesus. Oh my God, only two people appear to be in church. Say from today. Say my life. We show evidence of divine backing. In the name of Jesus. Say it again. Say from today. My life. We show evidence of divine backing. In the name of Jesus. So in the field of engineering. The field of technology, governance, politics. You know, in the field of creativity, medicine, whatever it may be. 
we see a divine backing. He said, the Lord is with the judge. So you are entering into the world to change, to take over with what? A divine hand backing you up. So you are not going there with your degree alone. It's not just your PhD or your master's. It's not just the degree you have. But there is something about your life. Are you still here with me? That gives you an edge. That opens doors for you. And gives you a breakthrough. Where there is no way for other people. Divine backing. So we see divine backing in their lives. Now go with me to the book of Daniel. Let's read a couple of scriptures about the life of Daniel. Daniel chapter 1 first. Amen. Now in Daniel chapter 1, let's read verse 8 first to start with. Verse 8. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. We're going to do a couple of readings and then we'll pray. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. Listen, I want you to leave this place today. With that divine backing. That, that is what makes you to change the world. Now he said, but Daniel proposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine that which he drank. Therefore he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now let me explain to you. I said this earlier uh, in the first service that when they took Daniel and his friends to the school in Babylon for them to be trained, they were not just trained physics and uh, economics. No. They were being trained in the art of magic. Wizardry. Are you still here with me? Basically, they were training them, amongst other things, to be able to access the realm of the spirit. To get wisdom from there. To help the kingdom of Babylon. Are you still here? Now, Daniel knew that they were training them to practice magic. So what did he do? Himself and his friends determined that we will be able also to access the realm of the spirit, but without using witchcraft. We will access the realm of the spirit by the spirit of God and get information, revelation, wisdom to change the world without entering into that realm by witchcraft. So when he said that he would not partake of this food, Daniel knew what he was saying. Amen. And in Daniel chapter 1 verse 17, the Bible says, as for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom and daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams so god gave them wisdom knowledge he was able to access into the realm of the spirit by operating with the spirit of god and the bible says verse 19 and the king communed with them and among them all was found none like daniel hananiah mishael and azariah and they stood before the king. Now go to chapter 2. How do we know that that was what happened? Chapter 2 gave us an insight. Don't forget in verse 21 of chapter 1. Bible said Daniel continued to the reign of Darius. The king of Persia. So in chapter 2 there was a problem. In the kingdom. The king Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And he forgot the dream. And he wanted the magicians. To tell him the dream that he forgot and the interpretation of the dream. And the scripture says that when the magicians came together, they said that, O oh king, what you are requiring from us, there is no king, there is no ruler that desires this or requires this from any magician or astrologer or Chaldeans. Praise the Lord. He said, because, go with me. He said, because this thing you are asking, right, is the answer belong to the realm of the gods. Go to chapter 2 and verse 10. Let's read together. The Chaldeans answered the king and said, There is not a man on earth who can tell the king's matter. Therefore, 
no king, lord, or ruler has ever asked such things of any magician, astrologer, or Chaldean. So Daniel and his friends were classified as what? Magician, astrologer, or Chaldean. That is, people that could access the realm of the spirit. Glory be to God. Verse 11, quickly. Verse 11. It is a difficult thing that the king requests. And there is no other who can tell it to the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. Listen, there are solutions that are only with the gods. Yeah. The cure for cancer is, is with the gods. And God is looking for people that will access it. Now, in verse 19, quickly, the king was very angry and he said they should kill all the magicians. But Daniel said to them, give us some time. Hallelujah. Let's read verse 16. Verse six, let's start from verse 16. He said, so Daniel went in and asked the king to give him time that he might tell the king the interpretation. Verse 17. Then Daniel went to his house and made the decision known to Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah, his companions. Verse 18. That they might seek mercies from the God of heaven concerning this secret. So that Daniel and his companions might not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Verse 19. Quickly. Then was the secret revealed to Daniel in a night vision. So Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Glory be to God. So we see here how Daniel accessed this secret. How? By taking time with God, himself and his friends. They spent time in fasting and prayer. So this was their practice in the three-year school of Nebuchadnezzar. They were spending those three years in waiting upon the Lord, in fasting, in prayer, in seeking the face of God. And as a result of that, they had access into the realm of the divine. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. So we see here that Daniel was not just operating like any other person. Daniel's source was God. <laughs> Daniel's source was God. And by the time you will get to Daniel chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 7, chapter 8, you will see that in chapter 5, he was able to interpret the handwriting. By chapter 6, right, Daniel made us to know that his source was God. He was operating from another dimension, superior to the dimension of other magicians. That was why when they made a decree that nobody should pray in chapter 6, what did he do? Three times in a day we open his window towards Jerusalem and he will pray. Why? Because he won't allow anything to tamper with his source. I'm praying tonight, today, that someone here, you know, will be so committed to responding to God. That in the place of communion, God will begin to show you. What nobody of your race has ever known. Oh my God. God will begin to show you solutions that the world has been looking for answers for. For generations in the mighty name of Jesus. Go quickly with me to Daniel chapter 10. From verse 19 to 21. I want to read us to read some scriptures there and then we'll begin to pray. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Now Daniel began to seek God 
Now in Daniel chapter 10 from verse 19, he says, and said, or well, let's start from verse 18. Let's start from verse 18 to get a better con uh, context. He said, then again, the word having the likeness of a man touched me and strengthened me. Verse 19. And he said unto me, O man, greatly beloved. Now, three times in scriptures, Daniel was called a man greatly beloved. And that was after the 21 day fast. A man greatly beloved. That is, you have entered into some realms in which there are things that heaven cannot deny you access into. Are you still here with me? And I'm going to show you. He says, a man greatly beloved, fear not, peace be to you, be strong, yea, be strong. So when he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, let my Lord speak, for thou hast strengthened me. Verse 20, quickly, verse 20. Then he said to me, do you know why I have come to you? And now I must return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I have gone forth, indeed, the prince of Greece will come. Read verse 21 with me, everybody. One, two, go. But I will tell you what is noted in the scripture of truth. No one opposes me against this except Michael the prince. So why did the angel come to him? In Gabriel, he said, I have come so that I can make you to know what has been noted in the scriptures of truth. Listen to me. If you are a prophecy student and eschatology student, one thing you will realize is that there was none in the Old Testament that got a clear picture of end time events like Daniel. He said, you are a man greatly beloved. So we can't hide these matters from you. Heaven has sent me to make you know the things that are noted in the scripture of truth. Hear me. There are secrets that are waiting to be unveiled to our world. And God is looking for men and women that will arise and we connect in the place of the closet with God that you will stay with God to a point that ever we come to you and say my son my daughter I want you to know these secrets if you read Daniel 7 Daniel 8 where Daniel was giving revelation about the antichrist the nature of the antichrist the nations that the antichrist will come from you know the kingdom that will be after babylon up to the time of the coming of the messiah daniel was the man in daniel 7 that got that revelation that jesus used to address himself in the gospels you know jesus will address himself as the son of man now, that son of man is not English language. It is from the prophecy of Daniel, where he said, I saw ancient of days seated, and I saw the son of man come to the ancient of days to receive power and dominion over all the kingdoms of the earth. Are you still here with me? Daniel got so much revelation, and he got the name by which Jesus will be called in the New Testament. Son of man. So in Mark 14, when Jesus was standing before the son Henry, and they were looking for how to frame him, and they could not get words against him, the high priest stood up and said, Tell us, are you the son of God? You know what Jesus said? He said, I am. And you will see the son of man ascend to heaven where he came from and the bible said the high priest tore his garment because that was blasphemy the high priest knew who the son of man is that the son of man 
is God in human form, Messiah. And when he said, I am, that I am there is not English language. In Greek is the Greek word ego emi, which is from the Hebrew word in, 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 uh, in Exodus chapter 3, verse 14, when God appeared to Moses, and Moses said, what is your name? And he said, I am that I am. Yahweh. So when he said, are you the son of the highest, the son of the blessed? He said, Yahweh, and you will see the son of man ascend to heaven where he came from. The high priest and the Sanhedrin knew that Jesus was saying, I am God. That was why the toy is coming. He said, we don't need anything against him anymore. This is blasphemy. He must die. So when some people meet you and say, tell me in the Bible where Jesus said he is God. Just laugh. Are you still here with me? Who got this revelation? Daniel. A man greatly beloved. I am praying that someone here, you will begin to operate in this dimension. Oh my God, that heaven will look at you and say, man, greatly beloved, that no secret will be hidden from you. My God, my God, listen, we can't change the world just by our wisdom. We need the wisdom that comes from above. We need revelation that comes from above. Higher Daniel got so much revelation. That in Daniel chapter 12, let's read this lastly, and then we're going to pray. Are you getting blessed at all? I want you to tap your neighbor, say, neighbor, it is time to respond to God. Come into the closet. Ooh. You know, by the time I'll be coming next year, there are businesses that will be dedicating here. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Because there are some wisdom to establish you as a CEO here. <laughs> Hear me. Hear me. Businesses to establish you. Wisdom will have come. Now, you see, Daniel got so much revelation about end times. I teach on eschatology a lot. And I tell you, Daniel taught so much on eschatology that even when Jesus in the book of Matthew and Mark was talking about, you know, end time events, he said, when you see the abomination of de desolation spoken of of Daniel, who so read it, let him understand. How? Because Daniel chapter 9, listen to me, do you know that from Daniel chapter 9, you can calculate Date from the time of Daniel to Jesus. I can work the mathematics for you. And you will arrive at the time that Jesus will be born. And you will arrive at the time that he will die. Calculations. And Daniel lived about 2,700 years ago. Glory be to God. Now, in Daniel chapter 12, let's read this lastly. He says, from verse 1 he said and at that time shall Micah stand up the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that time and at that time thy people shall be delivered everyone that shall be found written in the book and many of them that sleep in the dust shall awake that's resurrection some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. That's judgment. Daniel, who? Daniel was seeing resurrection of the dead. The judgment. White throne judgment. Verse 3. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as stars forever. Verse 12. But thou, O Daniel, shall be verse 2, so I mean verse 4. Verse 4, not verse 12. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase. 
Now, the angel was telling her, he said, Daniel, there are some things we have shown you that nobody can understand it until the time of the end. The man was too deep. He said, seal the book, close the book. That's why you see a lot of eschatology teachers made mistakes. It's until now that some things that Daniel wrote, people are beginning to understand. Now, look at verse 5. So he told him, he said, shut the book. Verse 5. He said, then I, Daniel, looked, and there stood two others, one on this river bank and the other on that river bank verse 6 and one said to the man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river how long does the fulfillment of these things be verse 7 quickly then i heard the man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river when he held up his right hand and his left hand to heaven and swore by him that lives forever that it shall be for a time times and half of a time that's three and a half years time one year times two years and half of a time and when the power of the holy people have been completely, verse 8, shattered, all these things shall be fulfilled. Verse 8. And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen, I mean, sorry, verse 8, and I heard, but I understood not. Then I said, Oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? Verse 9. And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Verse 13 again, But go thou thy way till the end, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days daniel got so deep and he was asking for that question he said daniel the one we have shown you is enough even the one we have shown you people won't understand it until the time of the end what do you want us to show you again we have shown you enough my pastor there are things deep that God can show you now about your life. Prophetic destiny over you that in one year people will be asking you, what did you use? So spirituality is for your good. Drawing near unto God is for your own good. And as we conclude this year's shift conference, there is a call I believe heaven is making. And the call is, are you ready to respond to God and draw near unto God? Are you ready to set time apart? And say, God, here am I. Lord, I will not allow any distraction in my life. Oh, Lord, I will wait on you, Lord, until my change come. In other words, until there is a change in your life, you don't become a world changer. <laughs> because to change the world means you need to disrupt the status quo. You need to shake the powers that have been holding men down and you need to go with a power that is superior this does not come by laying on of hands this comes by a determination to go all out for God to say God I am responding and God says by the time you respond and draw near the vineyard you are looking for he will give it to you Sharaba so kopa. So the call for purpose, the call to fulfill destiny is greater than the needs you are praying for. 
because if you can break through at that front needs will be settled husband will come wife will come job will come career will open healing will come breakthrough will come Haya. Hey, how many people today are ready to say, Lord, here am I. Lord, here am I. I need you in my life. Lord, I want to respond. I am not ready to be distracted anymore wherever you are if you want to sit you want to kneel you want to stand you want to lie down i want you to call upon the name of the lord right now if there is someone beside you and you feel like joining us with that person you can go ahead but anyhow make sure you pray make sure you call upon the lord make sure you call and say father here am i oh god father i respond unto your God. For you must be backed with power. You need a power that is superior to the power of the world. Enda kopete la pura da ganeshta Ia la bakose kataposte tayadabad Ye kopatele kopataya de lebos E parro kato shikarada la daba Ye kopato kopara kata ye kopade O prakata paya kato palada Come on lift up your voice Talk to the Lord talk to the Lord Lift up your voice and Lord, here am I. Koratala Shataraba, O Prandale Kopataya Katanadaba, Lord. Let your father. to pray this prayer come on let it come from your heart say Lord <laughs> I, I, I know you have raised me as a savior to my generation oh God I am the solution I am the savior to my generation my God and my father ah, you, I, I must not fail oh God almighty I must not fail my God and my father you are the one that have called me I need that divine essence that divine packet Lord I respond to draw near unto you oh God let your power come
fire here but you need to go home and go and shut the door you and God the modus operandi of God is that whenever there is a crisis a problem when men cry to God God will raise a savior a savior so men are saviors men are solutions there is enough trouble in this land and for you here today you are the saviors raised by God to bring deliverance but your eyes must open your eyes must open this is a greater call than your needs and God says when you respond to this call it will give you your needs from there before I pray I want to read two scriptures Isaiah 19 19 and 20 it says in that day shall there be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt and a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord and it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt for they shall cry unto the Lord because of the oppressors and what will he do and he shall send them a savior a great one and he shall deliver them so they will cry to God listen the nations are crying there are diseases that need saviors to Im emerge there are social problems technological problems troubles that men are crying what is God's response he will raise saviors and who are these saviors a mighty one mighty one a great one a mighty one in this meeting today God is raising mighty ones from here in the mighty name of Jesus you are being released from here with the anointing of a mighty one to bring change to this world listen to me we said on Friday Psalm 22 verse 30 a seed shall serve it and it shall be accounted for a generation so your destiny assignment is not for your locality it is something that must affect the world your generation must feel your impact and that is why you must go back to your room and lock your door and cry to God Lord there is something in me there is something my generation needs in me I may save your Lord open my eyes open my eyes finally and then we pray Micah chapter 5 from verse 3 now this is an end time scripture but I want to bring up a word from there he said therefore will he give them up until the time that she who is in labor has given birth then the remnant of his brethren shall return to the children of Israel verse 4 quickly and he shall stand and feed, in the, feed his flock in the strength of the Lord in the majesty of the name of the Lord is God and they shall abide for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth that's what he said to the ends of the earth now he's talking about someone here who will feed his flock and this is the Messiah and we are saviors in his order and he says it will be great to the ends of the earth listen I came across this revelation as a student in the university and I cried to God Lord I know what I am to do must get to the ends of the earth 
I am not just a local champion somewhere. Now, as a student, I cry to God. Look at verse 5. Verse 5. Quickly. And this one shall be the peace. That is the one that will be to the ends of the earth. When the Assyrian comes into the, our land. Now, that Assyrian means the Antichrist. And when he shall tread in our palaces. Then we will raise against him seven shepherds and eight princely men. Verse 6. And they shall waste the land of, the, of Assyria with the sword. And the land of Nimrod as his entrances. Look at this. Thus he shall deliver us from the Assyrian. When he comes into our land. And when he treads within our borders. Now that is the Antichrist. That's the, that's the Assyrian. So we see that he will do a job in the land, but he will be great to the ends of the earth. Dr. Sam said, there is something you must produce that we get to the ends of the earth. Dr. Felix, there is something you must produce. There is a solution in you that the whole world must feed from. Pastor Jeffrey, there is something yo, that the whole world must connect to. Your destiny is more than biology. No. There are prophecies hanging that you must fulfill. Something that in five years from now, a solution that the whole world will be connecting to. I watched online. A Nigerian guy started a business in Ukraine. Something, a software. I've forgotten his name now. That you need to use to like a diary to organize meetings and things like that. Yeah? Yes. And today, the world connects to it. That is what we are talking about. And he has become a billionaire from that. That is what we are talking about. So there is a local assignment. You are a lecturer. Now that's a local one. You are a pastor. That's a local one. But there is something bigger. Something bigger. That the world must connect to. Ah. Lift up your hands. Say, open my eyes, oh God. Say, open my eyes, oh God. Say, open my eyes, oh God. Say, take me into the depth of revelation. 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 Hey. We have come to draw, 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 ah, draw from you again. Hey.
to take this to our closets. But I am asking tonight, oh God, today, that Lord, the fire you have ignited in our souls, may it not die. In the name of Jesus. As we go back into our closets, oh God, let this fire continually burn. Let it continually burn. In the mighty name of Jesus. As we go into our closets, Lord, let distraction give way. Lord, let grace be multiplied. Grace for your presence. Grace for your presence. Grace for your presence. Grace for your presence. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let grace be multiplied. Let grace be multiplied. Let grace be multiplied. Lord, take us into the deep. Ah, we respond to your call today. Take us to the deep. Lord, there are secrets that only the gods have access to. Take us to those realms, Lord. Ah, secrets to change our world. Lord, speak to us in our dream. Speak to us by your word. Give us vision and revelations. Lord, that what we come out of us, we get to the ends of the earth. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. Father, we worship you. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Can somebody put his hands together for me? Amen. Now listen to this. I want you to go today knowing this, that there is a local assignment which you are already doing. But there is something that must get to the end of the earth from you. Something that the whole world will need you for. Go and cry to heaven. I'm not anointing anybody. Something has been deposited today. Don't let that fire die. Some of you here will produce something that will be a rescue for the whole of Africa. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, right from here. Something that will rescue your nation. Right from here. Something that will rescue Europe. Right from here. Hear me. Men are saviors. And they are to have impact to the ends of the earth. When I found this out, my life changed. I know my ministry must get to the ends of the earth. And it got to the ends of the earth. All continents of the world. How? I found this out. I pray for you this afternoon. Anyone that is sick in this place. Of whatever ailment or disease. The Bible says. It has pleased the Lord to bruise him. To make him sick. So the Messiah can't be made sick and you to be made sick. So whatever sickness are being found in your body, whatever day is being called, today I command, let it be uprooted from your bodies now in the name of Jesus. I command healing virtue let creative power of God flow into your bodies Amen. wherever you may be let the creative power of God 
Let it flow. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus. Because you are under this anointing today. Whatever the enemy put a stop to in your life. Marriage. Career. Fruit of the womb whatever finances the enemy put a stop to and you have been striving on one spot in that area and you are not advancing i stand as a prophet of god today i command you satan take your hands off take your hands off take your hands off in the name of jesus Today, let that aspect of your life receive the help of God. Let the prayers you have prayed on it be answered speedily. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, specifically I pray for breakthroughs maritally. For everyone believing God for a marital testimony no matter what has happened before under this anointing today i pray receive a breakthrough now receive a miracle now in the name of jesus foundational powers that have said no to your marriage and career under this grace they are dismantled Amen. in the name of jesus Amen. lord we thank you for testimonies you, he said now the lord has made room for us and we shall prosper in the land the lord makes room for you today Amen. in this land you will prosper Amen. In this land you will prosper. Amen. The Lord make room for you in this land. Amen. In this land you will prosper. Amen. Father will thank you for emergence of world changers. Amen. Emergence of world changers. Amen. We give you glory. We give you praise. Blessed be your name, O God. In Jesus' name we pray. If you know God have done something for you, put your hands together. Tell your neighbor, I am a savior. I am being released by God as a solution to my world. I will get to the ends of the earth. I am a savior from this generation. Shout hallelujah. How many people receive the touch of healing this afternoon? You receive healing in your body. Can you just wave your hands after we pray? You receive healing in your body. Anybody? Mama, God bless you. Any other person? You receive healing. Check your bodies. Check your bodies. Healings are taking place. Check your bodies. Lord, we thank you for these miracles of healings. They are permanent in the name of Jesus. The devil will not take your testimony in the name of jesus come and put those hands together for the lord can we just stretch forth our hands to the man of god and just ask that the lord will continue to supply the spirit needed to minister and that he will go from glory to glory in the name of jesus that lord we thank you for the gift of your servant and that lord he will go from grace to grace in jesus mighty name amen and amen in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen amen very quickly because we have to leave here in the next 10 minutes um i'm aware that there's a family who wants to do a baby dedication can they please come forward with the baby hallelujah the family that is here for baby dedication hallelujah but also if you want to give an offering hallelujah and also to an offering for the man of god you can just make the reference shift conference 
hallelujah the bank details will be on the screen and as the lord will bless you in jesus mighty name amen, amen. for the family that is here to give their baby dedication please come forward oh. hallelujah choir as your minister hallelujah amen hallelujah God. are there joyful people in the house of god shout hallelujah, hallelujah. let somebody shout hallelujah hallelujah the psalm says from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same the name of the lord be praised amen, amen. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, may your name be praised, oh, your name alone be praised, oh, from the rising of the, the, rising of the sun to the setting of the same, may your name be praised, oh, your name alone be praised, oh, from the rising of Amen and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this family who before your presence have come to dedicate their son, Emmanuel, which means God with us. Oweicho, meaning God, hallelujah, of the family of the day, that Lord, we dedicate this one unto your holy hands. The Bible said that indeed that from this day forward, let no man trouble me because I bear the mark of Christ. Amen. Therefore, we dedicate you in the name of the Father, Amen. the name of the Son, Amen. and the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Bible said that from the day that the oil came upon the head of David, the Lord came, came upon him. Lord, we use this oil as a symbol of your spirit that this one is marked out for you in the name of Amen. Jesus. That Lord of oh God in heaven, you will keep him in the path of the just. Amen. He will not dwell in the, with the ungodly, but his delight shall be in the laws of the Lord his God. And it shall be well with him in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray for the family, that Lord, all that they will need to raise this one in the ways of God. That Lord, you will supply in the name of Jesus. We say to you and your family, it is well with you in Jesus' name. The Lord will bless and keep you in all your ways. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen, amen and amen. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. Praise God. I'll just go over the announcements very quickly. Hallelujah. Praise God. Have we all been blessed? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. Very quickly, is anybody here that today is your very first time here in the place of victory? Praise the name of the Lord. Today is your very first time here in the place of victory. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Just give your neighbor a high five and say you're welcome to church. Welcome. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Again, just to acknowledge those who are watching online, that perhaps today is your very first time that the place of victory is coming your way. It's a joy for us to introduce God and his enterprise to your family. And we are asking that the Lord will bless and perfect all that concerns you all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. By the grace of God, as a church, there are various activities that we carry out within the week that help us align with the plans and purposes of God for us here in Swansea. One of them is that every Monday morning, by the grace of God, we have what we call our morning devotion. It's from the hours of 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. in the morning. But also on a Wednesday, we have our Bible study, and it's from 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. On a Friday, we have our prayer meetings, which is from 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. And then on a Sunday service like this, we have two services by the grace of God. One of them is that we meet from 10 a.m. to 11.30. Sunday school proceeds from 11.45 to 12.25. And then the second service starts from... 12.30 noon to 2 p.m. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. But also, every Tuesday, we have what we call the Youth in Christ Fellowship. This group of people, they meet in church. Hallelujah. They meet here in church from the hours of 7.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. And is strictly designed for those who are within the age categories of 16 
to 21 plus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Anyway, I'll, I'll just use my head. It's a, you know, it's, it's, it's not working. But anyways, um, God will bless us all in Jesus' name. But again, also, we have what we call um, our Sisters Unite, which is our women's fellowship. By the grace of God, they meet on Thursdays and they have two prayer sessions. The first one being from 6 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. And then on a Wednesday, on, on a Thursday, also, they meet from 8 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Praise God. The men as well also meet for the same time from every second and fourth Saturday of the month. And the times are from 9 p.m. to 9.15 a.m. Praise the name of the Lord. To promote kindness in church, by the grace of God, we have what we call our Samaritan's basket. We encourage members, when you go to do your grocery shopping, buy one or two items, drop them at the Samaritan's basket, and should you be leaving the church and see any item of interest, you are at liberty to take whatsoever you want, but God will bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. Amen. Every last Friday of the month, we have what we call our night of worship and prayer. Some will call it a video, but the idea behind it is for us to press into the presence of God to receive all that he has allotted for us in the month. And the one for this month will be on the 28th of June, 2024. And the time will be from 10 p.m. to 12.15 a.m. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We also encourage adults, when you come to church, please, 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 put your phones on silent. The notifications could be distracting. And the Holy Spirit will remind you to do so in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. The temple project, by the grace of God, is advancing. Should you want to partner with the church in this venture, Please do well. The bank details are right there on the screen. But never stop praying for the church as the Lord will build his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. The church has a, a podcast which is themed the Place of Victory podcast. We host all the sermons that are preached here in church. The idea is for you to continually hear the word because the Bible says in Romans 10 verse 17 that faith coming by hearing and when we continually hear the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. The church is calling out for workers. Should you want to volunteer or serve God in any capacity or the other, um, there's a barcode right there on the screen. Please scan the barcode and further details will be given to you. But perhaps you are a minister in the redeemed Christian church of God or you have been a worker at a previous RCCG parish. Again, fill in the details. Further details will be passed across to you on how we can integrate you into what God is doing here. And you'll be better off for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Should you also want to um, need counseling, whether it be academic, your marriage, finances, immigration, or all, all matters that pertain to your life, please scan the barcode and an appointment will be scheduled for you. And the Lord will bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Previously, we have announced that the church will be commencing a health and social workers fellowship. This is designed for those who are in the health sector. Perhaps you're a social worker, you are a health personnel, either a nurse, um, a medical doctor, and by virtue of your schedules, you're unable to be consistent in coming to church. The idea behind this fellowship is to provide a platform that your faith will stay aflame and God will bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. On the 8th of June, 2024, the church will be conducting a baptism. And so if you are interested in being baptized, please indicate interest by scanning the barcode. The last date of registration is on Friday, the 7th of June. And the time for the baptism on Saturday would be from 10.30 a.m. If you have any prayer requests, you want the prayer team to join you in agreement to pray, please write down your prayer request, put it in the prayer request box, and God will bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. To so stay in touch with the church, these are the various channels, and God will bless you. Amen. Can we rise as we take our confession for the month? Hallelujah. Amen. Also, um, I mentioned it in the first service. Um, our guest minister has brought some books authored by his wife, one that talks about the purple nuggets, and also the other one titled The Abundant Life. Hallelujah. The cost of each is just £5. Should you be interested, there are limited copies. 
but the ushers will make them available to you and god will bless you as you do so in jesus name amen let's take our confessions together one to go this month as i devote my all in pursuing god and the interest of his kingdom i declare that songs of joy and victory shall be heard within my household the strong right arm of the lord shall do glorious things in my favor causing my joy to be full in jesus name amen let us just share the grace and fellowship may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore amen surely god's goodness and his mercies will follow us all the days of our lives and we dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen and amen god bless you all and have a fantastic week amen <music>